you wonder why this country got so insane and how it's gotten that way and it's because of very effective activism and very effective tactics by the other side rules for radicals all right it was a book written by Saul Alinsky it's not really a book as much as a concept of how to assault the other side okay and it comes from a guy named Saul Alinsky an American homegrown communist born in 1909 um, comes out of Chicago school along with a few other notable people like Barack Obama who was one of his chief understudies, Hillary Clinton, okay, and he had a uh, couple rules to live by. One was all life is wa warfare. Now that isn't necessarily an untrue statement is it? No. <laughs> all life, we're, we're in a war ourselves and in this case we're talking about a culture war. Okay, another one is that in war the end justifies almost any means. So there's no limits to what they'll do and that's maybe one of the problems that we have on a conservative side because we have moral limits and they know it and they use that against us. So let's get inside Saul Alinsky's mind. Okay, this is the beginning of the book. The first radical known to man who rebelled against the establishment and did it so effectively that he at least won his own kingdom. Lucifer. Okay, that's his dedication. All right. Uh, Saul Alinsky, not that it matters, he was an atheist Jew, but I'm not sure how an atheist can believe in you, Lucifer. You figure that out for yourself. So, now, Alinsky's battleground. He fights in the court of public opinion, and that's where this battle's fought, and that's where it's so far been lost. It's not about facts or logic. You can never argue facts or logic with the people the way they argue. All right, it's, it's just not there. You're kidding yourself. Remember, they're postmodernist critical theorists who don't believe in the existence of reason anyway, only power. That's what you're up against. The idea is to instill fear, paralyze your enemy. What do they do? They talked with the other pastor. Oh, we'll get Antifa after them. They use fear. You look at all these companies. Why do they do stupid things? Well, because they were afraid of the activists. And it doesn't take many activists to put fear in a company or a person. Okay, this I do believe, I put this in myself, they exploit the infantile mind and they organize useful idiots. Now, organizing is a big thing of Saul Alinsky. You ever hear of community organizer? Who bragged about being a community organizer? Obama. Obama, okay? Now, I say the infantile mind because an adult mind won't fall for this crap. But the infantile mind, and I'm speaking specifically of people at Harvard and Yale, will fall for this crap, okay? <laughs> And, and literally the term useful idiots would came out of the communists, but they know who the useful idiots are. And you'll see them in the newspaper, by the way, commenting. So, um, so they say, be the community organizer. That's the agitator. The other word, the word that used to be used for a community organizer, if you were on the outside, was called a communist agitator. Okay? But remember, they're pushing fascism now, so they're pretty flexible. As long as they get power. So in the court of public opinion, Alinsky is concerned with power. He's a communist after all. I wonder if he'd be disappointed to see the fascists have taken over his party. But that being said, he's not concerned with winning a rational debate. You're not going to win that one. Avoid rational debate at all costs. That's what he's telling us. And the end always justifies the means. There's no limits to what you do. Practically no limits, he says. Maybe there is, but you only, his only limits say don't do something that will embarrass your own side. But they like to push it, as we can see. Um, and it's all about manipulating public perception. Reality has nothing to do with it. Fifth generation warfare, psychological operations, public perception. Rule number one, power is not only what you have, but what the enemy thinks you have. So it's derived from two sources. Power is money and people. Have, this is direct quote, have nots must build their power from flesh and blood. Okay, so you take it to the street. Now this is, comes from an Israeli uh, a uh, political guy from the, their left, and he said, you know, we, if all we get is mere 3.5% of the population mobilized, we win. Okay? It only takes a few very active people. So think of this. A small handful of activists organized by Antifa and BLM managed to intimidate businesses into going along with defund police. Uh, why would a business want to defund police? Why did they do it? They were afraid. They were afraid of the, what they saw as a potential, in other words, what they thought the left might have, we better go along with it. So they bought into it. Never go outside the expertise of your people. 
And this is important for the left because they got a lot of useful idiots over there, so you can't go too far, right? Just argue climate policy with one and you'll know that they're not that educated. All right? So going outside their expertise will cause them loss of confidence. There's the other word in here is, is uh, cognitive dissonance. It means your beliefs and the reality don't match and you don't know what to do. You know, it's like shit or wind your watch, I guess. But anyway, um, exploit Dunning-Kruger. This is something that Ken talked about. Dunning-Kruger is an effect that people who have actually the least amount of knowledge about a subject are most confident in their knowledge of the subject, that they know the most about it. If you ever looked at anybody on the left, look at, that's what they believe. If you try to get an, a, a rational argument out of them, it ain't going to happen. But they're still convinced they know. And it's all based on, on, on rhetorical uh, devices. Okay, so they'll use um, emotional rhetoric to energize their side okay, when evidence doesn't support the claim. So you all know that the earth is burning up. Look, it's got a fever, right? You're going to die and kill everybody if you don't wear that mask. That's what they got. They don't have evidence. They don't care about it because it doesn't work on their side. So they push this and they get the useful idiots to go along with them just enough. They get their way. Number three, whenever possible, go outside the expertise of your enemy. Notice he uses the word enemy. He's not playing games here. This is war. Okay? Look for ways to create anxiety and insecurity in your enemy. This comes right out of Sun Tzu, by the way. This is a big part of Sun Tzu's strategies. Okay? Exploit fear and the madness of crowds. What happens in crowds? Really bad things. Crowds go to madness very, very quickly. Uh, the French Revolution, perhaps? Okay. So ask, how many kids come home from school believing in catastrophic climate change? They've been told about it, right? Now, how many parents are intellectually prepared to correct them? Yeah. Most there aren't. Okay. So the parents can't say, hey, uh, that's not really the truth, right? So they go outside our expertise. They go to the kids, teach the kids something. Parents don't know anything better. They've gone outside our expertise now. Rule four, make the enemy live up to its own book of rules. If your enemy proclaims a set of values or principles, force them into a position where they must violate their own rules. And who does this work best against? The most effective strategy against Christians. Because if you don't do what they think is in the Bible, well, then, then, then they're going to call you out as a hypocrite. So, for, for example, shaming. How could you not welcome illegal immigrants? Jesus would welcome them. I like to remind them that Jesus could also whip up some uh, nice fish sandwiches very quickly to feed them. Okay, we have to work and pay taxes to do that. Number five, ridicule is man's most potent weapon. And this, I believe, is absolutely true. And you have seen this over the last, since 2016, in full force. Although you've seen it before. Okay, there is no defense against ridicule. It's irrational and it's infuriating. And if you can get somebody infuriating, they'll shoot themselves in their own foot. I think we all know what I'm talking about. Okay, ridicule is an escape from an irrational argument. You don't need rational. If I can say orange man bad, if I can tell you what a mean guy he is and get you to believe it, right? So why did Trump lose the white suburban woman vote? Remember, Trump went, went big on the Hispanic vote. He, went, he did really well against blacks. Pretty much the same with white, white men. Why did white suburban women leave him in huge numbers? Huge numbers. Because they, they were able to, opposition was able to paint him in a way. Purposely they did it. They know they got focus groups do this. In a way that white suburban women would say, I'm not voting for that idiot. No, they don't even consider what the alternative would be. They just say, I'm not voting for him. So even if you didn't vote for him, you didn't vote for the other guy, it's still another vote, in, in essence, for the other guy, right? So you flip, flip a vote, that's worth two. You take one away, that's worth one. So uh, rule six, a good tactic is one your people enjoy. And if you watch those parades, you'd see how this works out. They'll keep doing it without urging uh, without any urging, and they'll come back to do more. So you can probably expect that the people who did those parades that got everybody so upset, they'll be back. And they'll do it again and again and again. And as long as they see you get infuriated and act in a way that's probably going to draw sympathy for their side, I just turn my back and walk away and say nothing personally. Don't give them the audience. They'll keep doing it, right? It's like a little kid doing something. Oh, they're all in their infantile minds, right? Okay, so sad and sadistic people like to inflict pain. There's a lot of sadism over there. Okay, like performing porn in front of school kids. Okay, so conservatives have a hard time creating fun tactics. There's nothing fun about being conservative because it's work. 
it is work and it's discipline. So that's a tough one for us to do. But beware what they're doing to you. Uh, number seven, a tactic that drags on too long becomes a drag. Yeah. So activists realize when they're not getting the pain response they want, they'll get bored and go home. So if you turn your back on them and don't give them the thing, don't give them the audience, maybe you could get them to, to stop. But beware of tired talking points. The left will use all of a sudden uh, stop, excuse me, left will all of a sudden stop talking about a critical issue and change the subject. So when you, they'll do it for a long time, then people don't care. You're still talking about it. They've moved on to something else. They're attacking you with the next conspiracy theory, right? Rule eight, keep the pressure on and never let up. Are we still hearing about Trump-Russia collusion? Yeah, we are. The, the pressure won't, and they'll always come up with another and another and another. And I'm sticking up for Trump, but I am saying they'll come up with another and another and another. And they'll go on forever. Anyway, keep the enemy off balance with the pressure. Uh, invent new conspiracy theories about conspiracy theories. How many have there been? And now we found out each conspiracy theory was really just a heads up for what was true. But you keep inventing the, the conspiracy theories. And ask, how many fake right-wing conspiracy theories have we endured, endured so far? Just in the last, since 2016. All right? And we're still defending the last one than when the new one rolls around. It's usually more terrifying than the thing itself. All right? This is the perception of danger that creates fear in people. All right? Imagination and ego can dream about many more consequences than any activist can produce. So, for instance, your enemy will expend enormous time and energy creating the direst of conclusions when you challenge them. Okay, where did we see this? Right? It's a fifth generation war of attrition, right? It's an information war of attrition. And so, why did Bud Light finally succumb? And then you saw what happened, right? Target, right? Finally succumbed. So, the threat, the threat was worse than the thing itself. In other words, the, if they didn't go along with the woke agenda, they'd still be in business and doing fine, right? But the threat of activism against them for not going along with the agenda is what they were afraid of. So that's the, the threat being more terrifying than the thing itself. So rule 10, if you push a negative hard enough, it will become a positive. Violence from the other side can win the public to your side because of the public, sympath the public sympathizes with an underdog. That is true. And so they use tactics that cause your enemy to react in a way that makes them the bad guy. All right, example, what happened to Trump when he tried to defend himself? Right? Just turn it right around. They're, they're brilliant at this. And the, the idiots out there go along with it. Remember the mostly peaceful protests in Kenosha, Wisconsin, with the fires burning in the background? All right, well, who did they turn around and find to blame? Oh, that was right-wing conspirators out there causing violence. Right? And they do it. And it and apparently, it's, it won for them, right? You wonder why. That's the sad part. All right, rule 11, the price of a successful attack is a constructive alternative. This means never let the enemy score points because you're caught without a solution. So he was smart enough to know that you can't complain about something without pointing out an alternative or a solution for that problem. It didn't mean his alternatives or his solutions would work. His, his solution was always communism, right? And most of them now say, well, socialism is the exact problem, the uh, solution to all our problems, right? So um, your solution only needs to sound real. So this is what they're telling their people, right? So for example, the Green New Deal, which is just economic fascism rebranded. What does the Green New Deal solve? Wrecks the economy, does nothing for environment, nothing, absolutely nothing. They're able to, to uh, give an alternative but it's typically going to be a non-solution, but at least they have an alternative, right? So if we're going to complain about, you know, you want to complain about something, make sure you come up with an alternative solution that you, and make sure it's workable. That's the difference between us and them is we probably weren't going to produce nonsense like they do. But anyway, but of course the problem they're trying to solve is how to invoke 100% socialism. That's the problem they're trying to solve. It has nothing to do with environment, right? We know that too. Okay, and then finally, rule 12, pick the target, freeze it, personalize it, and polarize it. All right? Cut off the support network and isolate the target from sympathy. Go after people and institutions, but people hurt faster than institutions. What do we mean by, by this? Personalize the att an attack using ridicule and destroy. I'll take Jay Bhattacharya again. They destroyed him, right? 
Did they not destroy every, every reasonable climate scientist out there? You could, if you look up at some of the names, look up John Christie, guy we're going to get down to Chautauqua this year, okay? The little work that got him here is really cool. We got him. Anyway, you look him up in, in, uh, in uh, uh, Wikipedia, first thing I say, he's a denier. Or Tony Heller. He's great at, at, at bringing, a, uh, bringing out data, right? First thing it'll say, denier, denier, denier. So they want to destroy people. So if you don't go along with their religion, and it's a religion, then you are considered kafir, as the Muslims would say. You're, you know, you're a denier, or whatever. So anyway, so the, it has to do with. You've heard Clinton complain about the politics of personal destruction many years ago. You know, things people are attacking him. Well, he did get a taste of it himself, but that's what they do. We f take a person, isolate him, destroy him. It's what they try to do to Trump. And we're done with Trump. They'll go after DeSantis, and they'll keep going. And they'll try to attack and destroy everybody. And, but they're not going to stop, so be prepared for it. So, anyway, um, the ad hominem attack, use of denier accusation, etc. Like we said, what happened to Bhattacharya, Malone, Kaldorf? That's what they do, and they attack people. And it works. It works because you remember how many people believed that, you know, we needed to lock down, we needed to wear masks, and those COVID vaccines were safe and effective, right? They got people to believe it. We lost. It took three years to get our two and a half years to get out of that. We lost. They won. So, new rule. We can use these rules too, although there's limits, okay? Radicals are those opposing the establishment. The left is the new establishment, okay? Therefore, we can now employ these same rules, but we're going to have a harder time because we put moral limits on things. That's going to be harder for us to do. And what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Just don't lie, because they will come back on you if you lie, and they will make sure everybody knows it, and they got the press on their side. So, uh, last thing, David Horowitz, I don't know if anybody knows who David Horowitz is. He put together this pamphlet 13 years ago, Alinsky's entire strategy is the application of fifth generation warfare, the assault on the mind, through the use of anti-rational actions to evoke emotional responses. And remember what we said before, most modernist, critical theorist, opposed to the idea of reason. They don't, it doesn't matter to them. Power is the only thing that exists. They might be right to an extent, because if somebody's got an AK-47 pointed at your head, you're probably going to go along with it. Now, they can't make you believe anything, but they sure make you act a certain way, or die, right? In which case, I refer to the uh, William Wallace statement at the beginning of the program. Okay, so the influences, how, what influences um, the rules for radicals? Where does, where does it come from? There's a few. There's a book called The Prince by a guy named Machiavelli. It was written in 1499. It was describing how the princes who led the city-states in what's now Italy what they had to do to maintain power, because they're always fighting for power, okay? Now, that gave us the word Machiavellian. Does anyone want to volunteer a name? Who's the most Machiavellian politician you've known or seen? Come on, I was going to put one out there. Oh, Hillary Clinton, right? Machiavellian, anything goes, take the other guy down. No, you don't have to play clean, you just got to win, right? That's Machiavellian. So it has to do with being underhanded, whatever you've got to do to maintain power. Okay, his revolutionary fervor comes right from the Communist Manifesto. If you've never read it, it's not that long. Um, you'll get a good insight for what was in the Communist mind, what was Marx and Engels' mind when they wrote that. It's not impressive, but you've got to know it. Um, and then finally, strategy and deception comes from the art of war, Sun Tzu. We've talked about that before. That book is taught in business schools. But trust me, it's part of special ops training, and all military officers get that, okay? It's very important. So the, the book itself is a monumental classic going back like 700 years before Christ, but it's still taught today. But the part that, that Saul Alinsky picks up on the most is the use of deception. That's very important. It's called Barack Obama's Rules for Revolution, the Alinsky Model. This is exactly, he was talking about exactly the tactics the Obama uh, people used to win this election. Okay? Fantastic. You wonder why this country got so insane and how it's gotten that way. And it's because of very effective activism and very effective tactics by the other side. Rules for Radicals. All right, it was a book written by Saul Alinsky, How to Assault the Other Side. Okay, and it comes from a guy named Saul Alinsky, 